For more than a hundred centuries, the Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. The galaxy suffers under a dark and terrible era. Countless worlds stand on the precipice of damnation. It is an eternity of carnage and slaughter where the cries of anguish and sorrow are drowned out by the laughter of thirsting gods, for in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war. But can we get a bit more specific than that? Sure, there is only war, but who is fighting who and which thirsting gods are laughing so heartily? In this episode of Incoming, we'll look into the state of the galaxy in the 41st millennium, or is it the 42nd millennium? That question alone brings us to the first lesson anyone studying the Age of the Imperium must learn. There are no hard facts here, no certainties beyond the touch of doubt. Instead, we must rely on our best guesses and navigate through conflicting accounts. Embrace these findings at your own peril, for truth is subjective while damnation is eternal. So let us begin, where all things must, with the Imperium of Man. I believe it is no exaggeration to say that the Emperor's realm finds itself in a state of catastrophe unrivaled even by the events of the Horus Heresy. The Great Rift, a galaxy-wide terror in reality, has unleashed unprecedented warp storms and split the Imperium in two. On one side of the Great Rift there lies the Imperium Sanctus. It consists of Segmentum Specificus, Tempestus, and Solar, as well as parts of both Obscurus and Ultima. Here, the light of the Astronomicon still burns brightly, and navigation across the galaxy can still be conducted with at least some degree of reliability. While the Astronomicon has allowed Imperium Sanctus to survive the spread of the Great Rift, it has still suffered tremendously, with even Holy Terra attacked by demonic legions. But that is nothing compared to the horrors of the Imperium Nihilus. Separated from the light of the Astronomicon and cut off from all but the most determined aid, the so-called Dark Imperium stands alone against every manner of nightmarish foe. Before the spread of the Great Rift, this half of the galaxy was administered under Segmentum's Obscurus and Ultima. Since the Rift, however, travel through the warp is barely sustainable at even a crawl. The surviving Imperial worlds have instead needed to look to their own defense. Most struggle in isolation, believing that they might be the last light of civilization in a darkened galaxy and local governors have been forced to make terrible choices and enact monstrous deeds to ensure that light continues to burn. It is difficult to argue against the belief that the Imperium has entered the time of ending, the final stage before mankind, the galaxy, or even all reality falls into darkness, but there remain flickers of hope. The brightest of these is the return of the Primarch Raboot Gilliman, who now serves as the Lord Commander of the Imperium. It was through his will that the Indomitus Crusade was launched across the galaxy, and the imminent collapse of the Imperium prevented. Yet Gilliman does not stand alone. A new breed of transhuman space marines had been perfected, reinforcing existing chapters and forming all new ones. Together with the armies of the Imperium, these new Primaris marines have been instrumental in holding the vast territories of the Imperium together. There remain a few key routes through the Great Rift, with the potential to keep the two halves of the Imperium connected, and the worlds that guard those paths have become some of the most important territories in the galaxy. The Imperial Hive world of Vigilus, for instance, has become the ultimate prize, guarding the entrance to the Nachmund Gauntlet, and now fought over by the Imperium, traitors, and various Xenos races. Even the Adeptus Custodes, once rarely seen outside of Holy Terra, are now deployed to these distant war zones. While the extreme measures taken by the Imperium have proven effective, they unfortunately underscore the dire situation that mankind finds itself in. The forces of the Chaos Gods, by contrast, are celebrating their moment of triumph. The emergence of the Great Rift has brought greater opportunities to the ruinous powers than have ever existed in their long history. Even the most ardent Imperial worlds are now fertile ground for the spread of corruption and terror. In the Imperium Nihilus, dark cults are spreading at an ever-increasing rate, while demonic intrusions into the material realm are likewise becoming ever more frequent. The greatest symbol of their ascendancy, however, is the Shattered Realm of Cadia, once the linchpin of Imperial defenses and now the center of a burgeoning Chaos Empire. But with victory has come arrogance and impudence. Alliances between the Chaos Gods are always tenuous, and in their race to claim glory and prizes for their respective lords, the forces of the ruinous powers have turned on one another 
allowing the Imperium to once again contest planets and sectors that the traitors had easily taken. The success of Chaos has also created an era of desperation, in which old adversaries have forged once unthinkable alliances and embraced a common cause. This is no more evident than in the fractured Eldari, split between those who after the fall of their empire sought refuge on their surviving craft worlds, those who fled into the labyrinth of the webway, and those who embraced strange cults and ancient prophecy. And yet, one such prophecy is uniting the Eldari like never before. A high priestess of a new religion is leading a growing coalition of her people in the belief that the Eldari god of the dead might be awoken and set against the chaos god Slanesh. While the greatest attempt has failed, should this yet come to pass and should Slanesh be killed, the souls of all Eldari might be freed from the terrible curse that affects their race. For the first time since the fall of their ancient empire, all the Phoenix Lords have gathered together, and members of every Eldari culture have sworn loyalty to the same banner. Curiously, the same thing appears to be occurring across the Orc clans, although this may have greater consequences for the galaxy than even the spread of the Great Rift. The war boss Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka is generally regarded as without equal across the whole of the Orc race and beset by visions seemingly from the Orc gods, Gork and Mork. They have led Gazgul first to the Imperial world of Armageddon, turning its entire star system into a cauldron of battle, and later to the Orc Empire of Octarius, where he nearly single-handedly altered the course of battle against the Hive Fleet Leviathan. Gazgul's feats of battle have turned him into a living psychic beacon, and he is drawing Orcs and their trillions from every corner of the galaxy. It is rumored he now stands at the head of over 5 million warships, and leading them into the very heart of the Imperium. While the victory at Octarius cemented Gazgul's status among the Orcs, it was disastrous for the Tyranid Hive Mind. Only a select few of the Hive fleets have entered the galaxy so far, but their defeat at Octarius, Baal, and elsewhere, combined with the spread of the Great Rift, is denying the Tyranids the precious biomass that sustains them. If the galaxy is swallowed into a rolling tide of madness, the hive mind will need to look elsewhere for biomass, but having already endured such a long journey, it is doubtful it could survive. Yet the Tyranids excel at adapting to changing circumstances, and already new organisms and hunting patterns have been developed. And while the Great Rift does not benefit the Tyranid swarms in the long term, its spread has unleashed the potential of the Gene Stealer cults. Secret societies who worship the hive mind have found greater success as the Imperium's attention has turned elsewhere, and if the Tyranids can move swiftly, the Great Rift need not be a major obstacle. For the Tau Empire by comparison, the Great Rift has barely been a hindrance. Lacking a meaningful psychic presence in the warp and unable to use it to travel, the Tau have been forced to adopt slower yet more reliable methods that remain unaffected. Their history is marked by a series of aggressive campaigns of expansion to establish new spheres of influence, and the fifth sphere is bloodied but relatively intact. An assault by the Nurgle sworn forces of the Death Guard threatened to turn the Tau's newest realm into one of pestilence and slaughter, but through great cost, this fate has been averted. Yet the success of the fifth sphere was paid for in the suffering and loss of the fourth, and its few survivors tell that the greater good itself saved them from annihilation, taking the form of a multi-limbed figure adorned with an impassive mask. Whether the Tau have finally managed to influence the realm of the warp, or some strange deception is being played across their race remains unknown. The last and possibly greatest power in the galaxy has yet to fully reveal itself, but the spread of the Great Rift may have forced the hand of its last king. The Necron dynasties have awakened in fitful starts, with most still dormant, but with the return of their silent king, the process has been accelerated. The spread of chaos across the galaxy, and the arrival of the Tyranid High Fleets, threatens the future of the Necrons in a way different from all other races, stealing from them the chance to return to mortal form. But perhaps more so than any other race, the Necrons have the power to overwhelm the chaotic energies of the warp, and they have already established a so-called Pariah Nexus, free from the influence of the Materium. 
If this zone can be expanded across the galaxy, the ruinous powers will wither and die, and the mortal race is cast into madness before being harvested. If this is indeed the time of ending, then attempting to predict where things will go from here can only lead to madness. Nevertheless, I am of the opinion that even the return of Gilliman and the mobilization of Primaris Space Marines is not enough to prevent the collapse of the Imperium, yet perhaps this is only the first stage in the return of other Primarchs, or perhaps even the rejuvenation of the Emperor himself. While the latter seems unlikely, who among us could have predicted, even a few years ago, that a living Primarch would rally the Imperium once more? The Tyranids and Necrons seem the true wild cards in the developing scenario, Neither has any love for chaos, and should their twisted intelligences that guide them determine that the survival of the Imperium is necessary for the success of their long-term plans, well, who can say where things might go from there? But that, of course, is just my opinion, and even though I speak with the authority of the Emperor himself, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Does the Imperium have a chance at survival? Which force, if any, can stop the spread of the ruinous powers? What's the deal with the Hrud? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, this has been Incoming. In Incoming, the Templin Institute discusses the theories and ideas found across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.